some flight details. Gotta fly now. Auckland band Everything That Flies first caught the nation's attention midway through last year with their independently produced debut single, Bleeding Hearts, and the accompanying Kerry Brown video. The band's first gig was the Rock On New Zealand live television broadcast. Next on the ETF agenda is a single for Reaction Records, As The Sun Goes Down, and a national tour. Everything That Flies are Diane Swan vocals, Bruce Sheridan guitar, David Manning bass, Peter Harrison keyboards, Clive Sheridan guitar and keyboards, and Wayne Bell drums.
It's everything that flies playing live in Auckland. And no stranger to the band is photographer Kerry Brown. Hi, Kerry. How's it going? Very well, thank you. <laughs> Good one. People who are reading Rip It Up, Cha Cha and Shake, I'm sure, will know that it's you who takes the credit for most of the photographic work. And I think covers are becoming a Kerry Brown specialty. When you take a cover or a feature shot, are you thinking specifically of the magazine's point of view, the artist's point of view, or how, how you see it? Um, definitely mainly the magazine's point of view. Um, but a cover should generally have impact, so it's um, just trying to make the magazine look as good as possible and obviously the person I'm photographing look as good as possible, which quite often you know, takes a lot of work, especially with local people. How do you approach that? Um, it depends, really. If you're doing overseas acts, um, you don't really get much say in the matter about how you do approach it. Um, you may get three or four minutes at the end of an interview or get to take a photograph during an interview. Or even um, if they say no press whatsoever, you've got to try and get a cover from a live concert, which is um, somewhere like Logan Campbell where there's no stage pit or anything. It's very difficult. So is the final shot mainly your technique or is it how much the artist gives you in the I end? think there's actually quite an art to trying to do something very interesting in a very limited space of time. Um, like one cover did with Malcolm McLaren. We went up onto the top floor of his hotel and did a shot up against the window, so we had Auckland, yeah. like in the background, and that we had two or three minutes, but in those three minutes we had, you know, we managed to get a, a good-looking image. To take a good photograph, normally, I mean, it takes a long, a lot of time, a lot of preparation, you know, a lot of work by a lot of people. So if you've only got three or four minutes and you want a, an image that is to the quality to put on a cover, you've got to have a very simple and a very effective idea. Yeah, well, you've been close to some of the great performers, like Lou Reed and David Bowie, for example. Do you ever get intimidated by the fact that they are so big and you've got to make them look good? Um, not really. David Bowie would probably be the only person that I was in any way kind of awed by, but that's just because I've you know, bought his records for an awful long time, but generally um, not exceptionally so, no. Did you have a specific idea when you were taking his photo of, of what you wanted to do? Um, well, him, really, it was just... He was just live photographs at um, at Western Springs, so we had were well, given three songs at the beginning of the concert to take the photographs. So, um, which is not a long time to, especially when you're out there and the three minutes, the three songs go very caref very quickly. Sorry, mm -hmm. and I mean the crowd's going berserk and <laughs> quite a tense situation. And the people are collapsing, they're dragging them out, you know, over the fence and. It's very, you know, You've it's just very difficult to concentrate. He's moving very quickly and the lights are changing and you're trying to keep him in focus, let alone watch what he's actually doing. I mean, it's, um, you've got to be able to concentrate on what you're doing, let alone what's going on around you. So that would be quite different to the fashion photographs you take? As oh, definitely. A fashion photograph is a lot more drawn out and you've got the time to, to get things right. In those circumstances, it's just being able to... Um, it's like basically being a press photographer, just working in... You know, you have no control over the situation. Where when I'm taking a, photograph, a fashion photograph, I have com complete control over what I'm doing. You know, and everyone who is working on the photograph. But um, in a rock and roll photograph, you have very little control over anything. Okay. Well, let's take a look at some of your work. Okay. Kerry, you've now moved on to making videos. You've worked on the latest Peking Man and also Everything That Flies. Is that going to be a natural progression for you? Um, well, I'm actually not shelving it, but I'm actually slowing off and doing videos at the moment because I'm just concentrating on doing the fashion thing. But I would like to do a lot more of it. The way I treat making videos is very much in line with what I do photographically anyhow, so it's just an extension of that. So the video is basically just good photography it's not full of effects or whatever so it's just 
six, instead of a split second for a photograph, it's you know three and a half minutes of that, just good looking footage. Um, spending a lot of time, obviously because of my ties in the fashion industry, I can um, make people look good and a lot on, on the look of it, the way people look and the style of it, which New Zealand rock and roll hasn't concentrated on for quite a long time, so it's interesting taking that approach. Sure, what was your specific input to the new Everything That Flies? Um, well, I was the, I directed it, but, um, and Stuart Dryberg, who I've um, done all the video work I've worked on, was the cameraman. We both just kind of work together, right? He mm -hmm. has as much input as what I have. I, I put a lot of input in, like, Diane had um, seven or eight outfit changes in the, in the video. She's the only person in the video, or well, the band feature, but the band are all styled completely as well. To, to their own character, they had to approve what was happening. I mean, you can't just wipe their personality completely, but you're um, just concentrating on details, making sure that they, that they look okay. Right, we can have a quick look at that one too. Okay. You're living overseas now. Is that because New Zealand is just too small for what you want to do? Um, yeah, I'm just at a stage now where I'm just repeating myself here, and I enjoy, and I've made an awful lot of progress here. And I'm still coming back here. I'm just based in Sydney, and I've been coming back every two or three weeks. I come back and do maybe a video or a large fashion shoot, or you know, two or three shoots. But there's just a lot more ground I can make in Sydney. A lot more exciting magazines and you know just progression naturally really so you're sort of on a commuting <laughs> thing there yeah definitely i have been i've been back and forth about five times in the last six weeks it's crazy well what what can we expect from you say in the next five years do you know where it's going to take you? um definitely spending a good two years probably in um australia and sydney and just try and get on top of the industry there and from there possibly I know, New York City, Italy, anywhere. I mean, hey, I'd the world's your <laughs> oyster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good luck. We wish you all the best. Thanks for talking, and we're going to take a look at your very first video, Bleeding Hearts. Okay. <laughs>